coffin and put this one away with one more Keith, Case Keenum score. That one intercepted by Philip Stewart, the linebacker, junior linebacker from Missouri City, Texas. Two minutes, 50 seconds left to go. If you're the Cougars, what do you do? Do you play conservative? Do you get SMU to use their timeouts? Or do you go deep and try to really put this one away yourself? Got to give the Cougar or the uh, Mustangs credit, though. Holding Houston to just 30 points, which is half below their, their uh, average of their last three games. Two minutes left to go. They're going to do it on the draw plane. It looks like the Cougars are going to go a little conservative here. They get SMU to burn one of their timeouts, but now we have five wide. Case Keenum with five wide receivers. Keenum drops back. Keenum doesn't have enough for the first down. Completed that one to number 89. And number 89, that is Isaiah Sweeney. A junior from Missouri, Missouri City, Texas. A lot of Missouri City guys on this uh, Houston Cougars squad. And the conservative route, it got SMU to use two timeouts. It got some time away from the clock, but we'll see what happens. We saw how it almost bit Boise State on our very first BCS playoffs preview game against LSU. Well, JJ's got uh, that one batted away, and he's got to be more careful with his throws. He's already tossed two interceptions tonight. I should say today this game is going to be a uh, 2:30 Texas time. So today, tonight, depending on when you're watching it, second down and ten, he gives it to Zach Line, and Line gets three yards. Well, that's not going to do it. It's third down and seven, and you're to the point in the ball game. You gotta start heaving it, JJ. Dormant drops back. That's knocked away, incomplete. So fourth down and seven upcoming for the Southern Methodist University Mustangs. They have one final shot. The once famous announcer once said, one last gasp for the Mustangs in this game. And they still have a pulse. That's going to be a SMU first down. Here comes the no huddle. One minute, 16 seconds to go. And J.J. McDormand's going to spike the ball. Didn't feel comfortable running the play. Decides to lose the down and instead huddle up and get the right play call. We'll see if that decision pays off for him. Be second down and 10. J.J. McDormand. Hey, he's got an open receiver pushed out of bounds, and that's going to be a first down. So that'll stop the clock. Great throw by McDormand and a great catch by Southern Methodist receiver uh, Keenan Holman. Not only reel that one in, but to get out of bounds and stop the clock. One, one, one. Left on the clock on a first and ten. A lot of ones. Not only enough, down by two scores. McDormand back to pass. Across the middle. That one is completed for a first down. He found his wide receiver that one. Number three has had a great day, Darius Johnson. We have a Darius Johnson who's number three on SMU. And then we have a number three on the Cougars. It's Justin Johnson. So those Johnsons like those threes. And we have our first penalty of the game. It's going to be a false start against the SMU Mustangs to back him up. Not that much of a mistake. I think they could overcome it. It'll be first down and 15. Certainly doesn't help them out at all when they're trying to drive down the field. But J.J. McDormand, he had a wide open receiver and overthrew him incomplete. Can we get a shot of J.J.? He is absolutely devastated that he missed that one. Extremely upset. Second and 15, less than a minute to go. Under pressure, and he's got sacked, and you can't take a sack in that situation. You got one timeout left there trying to conserve it. Everybody's got to rush back. Under 50 seconds to go. J.J. McDormand, third down and 24. That's caught just before the 40-yard line there down at the 42. This is it. One last play. One last gasp. Do they have another life in them? How many lives do these Mustangs have? Oh, touchdown SMU. They say that Cougars, that Cats, have nine lives. Well, it looks like that tonight, today, whenever you're watching this, that SMU, that Mustangs have nine lives. 
great throw and a great catch. That one was brought in by number 87. And uh, I don't have an 87 here. Who's that say that was? Longoria? Well, here comes the onside kick. And that's going to be recovered by Houston, and that one might do it for SMU. I have a Derek Longoria that's a linebacker. So... I apologize for the parent of the kid that caught that touchdown, but you don't have a name on you. And I uh, can't always be perfect with these uh, with these names and these rosters that you get and everything, but there you see Case Keenum, only 10 incompletions on the day, 535 yards, three touchdowns, and it's victory formation time for, for uh, Houston. The SMU can only stop the clock one more time. What a fun game this was. A great rally, a great second effort, and I hate to say it for the SMU fans and for the SMU players. On that third down, if Case Keenum doesn't come up with that, what was it, a 60, 70 yard pass down the field for the first down down to the 10 yard line, and that ends up being incompletion. That next play is fourth down. SMU gets the ball back. They go down and score like you just saw. We got a tie football game in our hands. Instead, because Case Keenum is so clutch, they win by seven points. 34 to 27. The Cougars improved to 11 and 0 on the year. Let's check out our play of the game, and they decide to give play of the game. I can actually, actually, I can agree with that. I, I was thinking the play of the game would be the long heave to the 10 yard line but the interception return for a touchdown was the play that really swung momentum because again you take away that seven from Houston and give it to SMU and SMU scores on that drive again we have a actually we don't have a tie game on our hands the, the Mustangs win this game if not for that interception return for a touchdown the SMU Mustangs win this football game that they got I think they got it right that was the play of the game you definitely got a credit Number 10, Zachary McMillan, the defensive back, the sophomore. He may have had the play of the game, but Case Keenum with his 330 yards, three touchdowns, only 10 incompletions. He was certainly your player of the game. Another fun game. It almost came down to the wire. We had an onside kick in here, but we've had some pretty fun competitive close games in these Bowl Championship Series playoff games. Taking a look at some highlights. Case Keenum, how exciting is this kid? And we're going to get a chance to see what he does. Subscribe to the YouTube page if you want to see what Case Keenum does against some of these bigger teams. And let's take a look at that one more time. Thrown right into double coverage. Certainly a momentum swinger. A seven-point momentum swing that not only would have given SMU the lead... But it would have given SMU the victory here today because the Cougars won by just seven points. But of course, you can't count out the heart of the SMU Mustangs. There was the last touchdown of the game by SMU. Great throw, great grab. And a couple of final snapshots. And we're going to take a look at some stats before we bid you farewell. But uh, again, Either join the Facebook page, there's a link in the description, you can search right down there, right under the scoreboard, or subscribe to the YouTube page if you want to see what happens in the Bowl Championship Series, the only place where you can follow the actual college football season and see what happens if the playoffs took over. There's Case Keenum again, numbered one more time, 22 of 32, 335 yards, one touchdown, and the interception. Taking a look at J.J. McDormand. He was 24 of 42 for 378 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. And that's what killed him was the two interceptions. And uh, who would have thought that he would have outthrown and gained more yards than Case Keenum and ended up losing. For Zach Line, didn't have the greatest game in the world, just 11 attempts for 32 yards, didn't score a touchdown. In fact, it's more of a passer's game. Same thing there's your... Taking a look at your running number, seven attempts and one yard for Bryce Bell. Uh, taking a look at the receiving, 
Uh, leading receiver on the day, definitely right down here, Patrick Edwards. Three catches for 73 yards, two touchdown grabs. Uh, next leading receiver, if you're not looking at touchdown grabs, was uh, Tyrone, Tyrone Carrier, who had uh, three catches for 110 yards. And then after that, of course, you got to go for the other touchdown. That was Justin Johnson for six grabs, 64 yards. Taking a look at the SMU side, the other Johnson at five catches, 74 yards, and Keenan Holman, five catches, 73 yards. How about uh, Hayes coming in for four catches and 83 yards and our one touchdown of the day, Derek Longoria, number 87. And then uh, let's take a look at some defensive numbers. As we take a look at the sack numbers, how many times did Case Keenum go down? No times. That is another big reason why the Cougars won this one. Keenum had way too much time to throw. Not much pressure on him. Anderson had four, or four tackles. We had Castro with five tackles. Ta Taylor Thompson had a couple of tackles for a loss. Uh, he had uh, three of them. And then there you see Gerard Davis had the interception on the game. Taking a look at the Cougars side. Zachary McMillan, five tackles. He was the second leading uh, tackle guy in the, on the team. The one interception and 101 return yards. Other than that, or excuse me, he was a third, third uh, tackle man. And see the seven here. Seven tackles, six tackles, two sacks on the day. They got to three sacks on the day. They got to J.J. McDermott. There's the other interception. It was brought in by Brandon Hartson. And uh, after that, not too much else happened. Let's take a look at some some team stats before we send you away. There you see first downs. SMU got them on the first downs. They got them on the total offense. They did better in rushing yards. They did better in passing yards. But you see right there, the money down. If I had a telestrator, I would circle it. I'm pointing at it with my mouse, but the money down. 50% the Houston Cougars were on the money down. SMU just 30% on the money down. That's part of why the Cougars won this game. Four down conversion though. June Jones has got to like that. Two for two, 100%. That's pretty clutch. Red zone though. Again, that's where your win comes from. Red zone efficiency, 100%. Four times in the red zone, the Cougars scored twice. Two field goals. For SMU, they got to the red zone three times. Had to settle for a field goal, had to settle for a touchdown, and then on one point, the interception returned for a touchdown, they had to settle for seven going the other way. And if they could have just scored, instead of getting those field goals, when they got down into Cougar territory, when they got close to the red zone, that was twice they got held to field goals, they had converted on both of those touchdowns, this is SMU game. Turnovers, and again, even though the yardage, everything going into the favor of the SMU, Taking a look at third downs, red zone efficiency, and turnovers. And that's why the Cougars won this game. Other than that, everything on the field or on your screen, pretty self-explanatory. Even time of possession, but I, <coughs> I think for the Cougars, they're always going to get beat in time of possession. Uh, the way they just go down the field like crazy. Well, that's going to do it here for today. Uh, Thank you, Ian, for requesting that game. That was a fun one between the Cougars and the Mustangs. And head over to the BCS Playoffs page and request what you want to see as your next game of the week. Let us know, and we'll do it and put it up for you.